Agile is a way of enabling like the work cells in that factory. But what is the factory, right? How does work flow across? You know, in the agile world, we're really focused on the idea of empowering teams. Like, like the teams are the best people to understand how work is supposed to get done. There's really not a lot in the agile community right now that basically says like, how do we apply systems engineering and systems thinking to how the how the assembly line of software happens? What is the supply chain for software at scale look like? There's something that I'm exploring here a little bit um, that's been on my mind lately that I'm going to share with you guys. And so I spend a lot of time talking about the differences between agile practices and the nature of the organization that is necessary to deliver against those agile practices. And so what what that is in my world, it's really the difference between, like, say, I'm doing Scrum, right? I've got Scrum masters and product owners, and I do daily stand-ups, I do sprint planning, I do reviews and retrospectives, versus the idea that I have really well-formed, complete cross-functional teams. Those teams operating off of a really, really clear backlog, and that are able to produce a working-tested increment of software at the end of every sprint. Um, we go into client after client after client that are that are doing agile really really well. Agile is is pretty well understood at this point, but um, that are unable to form the kinds of teams um, that we want them to form. That are unable to build the kinds of backlogs that we need them to build. That are able to produce the working tested software that um, we want them to to produce, and. And this is the interesting thing. So I'm going to just, I'm just going to just, just chat with you guys for a minute. So like the, the challenge is, is a couple fold, right? If you go back to the early works on agile, right. And, I, and I'm thinking back in the, I guess what would be like the early two thousands, like the early Alistair Coburn work, the early Mary Poppendick work, the early Kent Beck work, the early Ken Schwaber work, the early Jeff Sullivan work, um, the early Mike Beadle work, right. All that stuff, right. The stuff that those guys were exploring during that time was, was really the underlying theory of how you organize around value streams. They were exploring the idea of how to deal with variation in highly variable systems. They were exploring the idea of lean applied into the software development process, how to operate in smaller batches, how to continuously focus on quality, how to continuously get feedback. Um, I talk a bit about the idea, maybe the differences between predictive process control and empirical process control. Right? There was really like a deep understanding, a deep exploration of the theory of software development. And over time, what started happening was that, um, was that those, those practices became codified. And then you have Jim Cundiff and others at the Scrum Alliance at the time that really popularized the, um, the CSM training. Right? It took Agile mainstream. Even PMI got on board with the uh, PMI ACP certification. And, and in order to certify somebody on something, what you really have to do is you have to, you have to make it repeatable, right? So you have to know, like, what are the roles? What are the ceremonies? What are the artifacts? Like, what, what is Agile? What is the, um, what is the, what do, what do you do to do Agile? Um, and it just seems to me that at this point in our evolution as an industry, we are, we are focusing on the practices of Agile over the underlying theory. Now, like I talk about this a lot, right? So we talk about leading Agile being a systems first company. So what I mean by that is we have to get the structure of the organization, right? We have to get the governance, we have to get the metrics, right? We have to, we have, to have an, an idea of what the end-to-end -end system of delivery looks like. And then we enable that with practices 
and then culture emerges over time. But what I'm what I'm really kind of hunting down when I go down that exploration is I think a lot of us either have forgotten or are not aware of the underlying physics that that those practices were designed to work on top of. Right. It's like it's like the physics of um, teaming strategies, the physics of small batch, the physics of um, balancing capacity and demand, the physics of constant inspection and pulling risk forward and all that kind of stuff. All of that stuff got um, codified into these um, practices of Scrum, these practices of SAFE um, and, and other methodologies that emerged. And, and, and I think one of the biggest challenges um, that we're dealing with as an industry right now is, is that we're, we're thinking that if we do the agile things, that we're going to get the agile results. If we, if we show up and do a daily standup, that's going to, um, that's going to, um, you know, really cause us to get the results we want. Right. Um, and you know, another line of thinking that has been noodling and around in my brain a lot, you know, so back in the early nineties, I was, um, in college and I did a degree in computer science. And my first job out of school was as a systems engineer for EDS. And, and one of the things that I think is interesting, you know, they put you through a fairly rigorous uh, systems engineering development program. And, and I think I, I probably have undervalued the, um, the amount that that systems engineering perspective has um, really kind of penetrated um, into how I think about things. And, and I, and I, you know, we talk a lot about the idea in the agile community of being a systems thinker and such like that. And, and that's true, right? But one of the things that, that I think is, is somewhat pervasive right now is, is that the idea of agile and collaboration has somehow supplanted the idea of systems engineering. Um, and so, what, what I think that we have to start thinking about, maybe very explicitly, is what is the system? How do we engineer the system that we are operating on top of? And how do the agile practices um, enable that system? And so, so what we're really doing when we're exploring the idea of transformation, when we're thinking about um, implementing a new system of delivery or a new organizational operating model or something like that, what we're really talking about is what is the, the systems engineering focused design of that organization? How does workflow across that organization? What do the interfaces between teams look like across the organization? Um, I've mentioned this on uh, my videos before, but probably about five or six years ago now, definitely pre-pandemic, um, I was going back to my alma mater, the, the University of Florida, and I was doing a lot of talks on campus. I got involved in the um, I got involved in the uh, uh, entrepreneurship and innovation groups, uh, uh, engineering leadership. I got pulled into some of the industrial and systems engineering classes over times. And when I started um, talking through the, um, the idea of Agile with those industrial and systems in engineers, what I, what I started thinking about was the idea of what does the software factory look like? I started thinking about the idea of what would it what would it mean to imply apply industrial and systems engineering concepts to the software factory. So so the the idea that's really rolling around in my head right now is the idea that like agile is a way of enabling like the work cells in that factory. But what is the factory, right? How does work flow across? 
you know, in the agile world, we're really focused on the idea of empowering teams. Like, like the teams are the best people to understand how work is supposed to get done. And there was a comment around one of our posts last week that I replied to. And I said something like this. It was like, it's like, if I'm working on an assembly line and, and I'm responsible for putting doors on a car, I might be the absolute best person to put um, input into the, the mechanisms of putting doors on cars, right? If there's a, a problem with how we're putting doors on cars today, I, I might have some really valid feedback in, how, in terms of how to put doors on cars better, something like that. But, but am I necessarily the best person to engineer how that assembly line works? Am I necessarily the best person to reimagine the supply chain? And, and I think that there's, there's something in like what we're doing as an industry right now that's basically saying that if you do scrum or you do safe, the assembly line will emerge, the supply chain will emerge. And and that's probably true to some extent if the organization is small enough. Like if it's really um, just out of the box, ready to do agile stuff in an agile way, um, there are a lot of things that will emerge out of that. And by doing Scrum and doing Safe, your impediments will be revealed and, and they'll be reasonably easy to change in terms of how that team operates. But I, but I think a lot of that stuff is like, how, you know, it's, it's like the impediments, like, you know, how do we, how do we make door assembly more efficient? Something like that. Um, there's really not a lot in the agile community right now that basically says like, how do we apply systems engineering and systems thinking to how the, how the assembly line of software happens? What is the supply chain for software at scale look like. Um, and and even, even with the scaled frameworks, right? I, I really conceptualize those as, as operating models in the presence of a functioning assembly line. Um, it's an operating model in the presence of a functional supply chain. But what if the assembly line isn't effective? What if the supply chain isn't effective? I'm not, I'm not sure that we should ask the folks that are putting doors on a chassis for that advice. And so maybe I'll wrap with this. It's like, it's like when I'm hunting for good words for, and I'd really love some feedback on this. I'd really love you guys to put some stuff in the comments and um, you know, maybe uh, help me understand like what, parts of the story you would like me to unpack a little bit more or go deeper into? Because I, I feel like I can go a lot deeper, but I'm not sure where you guys are at with me just yet. So, so feel free to comment. I'd really appreciate it um, if you guys would give me some guidance here. But, but I'm not sure that the people that are, that are in the bowels of doing the work um, are the best people to organize the system to do the work at scale. Or... Um, Furthermore, the ones that are best able to decide um, how to take a broken assembly line, how to take a broken um, supply chain, and, um, and, and reimagine that, okay? Um, there's a book I'm reading, and I apologize, it just came to mind, so I'm going to talk about it. I'll, 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 make a, I'll ask my team to, to put a reference for it in the comments or something. There's a couple of books on Agile Systems Engineering that I've been reading, Dr. Bruce something or other. Um, just got started on both of them. And, and they're really fascinating explorations of the idea of what does systems engineering look like relative to agile software delivery. And um, best I can tell from the early stages of this, these, these books are more like um, you know, systems engineering around products. But what we're really talking about is systems engineering around organizations. And so um, when we're talking about transformation, we're not talking about how to help people um, get better at collaborating to build doors. When we talk about transformation, we're talking about the aspects of the assembly line. We're talking about the aspects of the supply chain. 
Like, what does that look like? Um, and I get that a lot of folks are probably going to dismiss what I'm exploring here out of hand because, you know, we don't really like the idea of um, an assembly line for software. Some of us don't, at least. We like the idea of craftsmanship, right? We like the idea of um, almost like boutique delivery. It's almost like what we're saying is that we should, you know, if we're Ford Motor Company or something, we shouldn't be building cars in mass. We should be building boutique Lamborghinis or something like that. Um, but the reality is, is that there's a lot of software organizations out there that that are um, trying to operate at scale and they are trying to do really big things. And it requires a certain amount of kind of systems engineering focus. But what it, what we've kind of found over the years, and there's a there's a talk that I've done, I call it Faster Food and a Better Place to Sleep, where I was working with a, a hotel chain and a fast food restaurant, um, both based here in Atlanta. And uh, we we're talking about the idea of agile delivery and really non-agile systems. And a lot of times when you're when you're thinking about that, right, the the software factory is really an idea factory. It's like, how do we get ideas to flow? How do we get decisions to flow through to the system? And so I just think there's some interesting stuff to explore. So don't dismiss this idea out of hand for me, because again, it's some level of scale. You're going to be dealing with software as an assembly line, right? A software um, as a, a supply chain. And the supply chain might be ideas, it might be feedback, it might be validation, right? Where the actual building of the part is somewhat unique and boutique at the work surface level, but the decomposition of the ideas into actionable work and the roll up of those ideas that have been manifest in actionable work into integrated deliverables, that's absolutely a supply chain problem. So what we might try to do over the course um, of time, again, I'm unpacking things from a lot of different directions here as I think this through, but um, the idea of agile, even in pure play software is really a systems engineering exercise. And what does it look like to engineer a system of delivery at scale in a large enterprise. So um, again, love your feedback. Would love to, to see how you guys would like me to unpack what ideas resonate with you, what ideas don't. Feel free to leave us um, a comment and I look forward to engaging with you there. So um, have a great day, guys. See ya.